Tony Topswig and welcome to Watch the Dickens, the panel show that tackles art and culture with all the gritty social realism of high school musical. <laughs> our two captains are comedian and player of poker in televised tournaments, Sue Perkins, and comedian and player of Snap in his kids' nursery, Chris Addison. <laughs> Sue's guest is a comedian who has worked in a garage as a TV repairman, as a poet, as a journalist, and now continues that downward spiral by joining <laughs> us tonight. It's comedian Mark Steele. <laughs> Chris's guest is part of the Food Standard Agency's salt reduction campaign. <laughs> which she Highlight. rails against the dangers of salt. This has made her not only a standard bearer for health, but also something of a hero amongst the slug community. <laughs> Please welcome Jenny Eclair. Oh, hey. Hey. The first round is Three Steps to Heaven. We show our teams three images in turn, each offering a clue to a famous film, book, play or musical. Three points are awarded should they guess the answer from the mind-bogglingly difficult first <coughs> picture, reducing to just one for the mind-numbingly obvious third picture. So Sue and Mark are going to get us underway, and here is your first clue. Lou. Did anybody recognise any of these fellows? Well, there is, um, uh, being a man of the uh, Crystal Palace Football Club uh, persuasion... Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> I'd suggest that there's a sort of Palace so Royal Palace. connection. OK, it is, it is a collection of Crystal Palace footballers uh, from the 1970s. Yes. Uh, let's have a look at the second photograph now. The palm the tree. trees, wide boulevards, expensive cars... Smethwick High Street. <laughs> it's it, it's actually it's Beverly Hills. Beverly. Uh, and I can tell you that you are looking for a play. Beverly, is that? Uh, oh, um, um, Beverly's in. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yes, Abigail's, yes, Abigail's, Abigail's, Abigail's party. party. Abigail's party. Yes. Absolutely oh. right. Yes. yes. <laughs> Well, you're quite right. The answer is, of course, Abigail's party. Mike Lee's classic study of a middle-class dinner party gone bad. So let's have a quick look at the photos there. The character of Tony used to play football for Crystal Palace, hence the footballers. The dinner party is hosted by the monstrous Beverly, hence Beverly Hills. And I can show you what the last photograph was going to be. Beverly herself is obsessed with Demis Roussos and insists on playing his records during the play, hence Demis Roussos. So two points there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Abigail's Party is a class-based comedy of manners which snobbishly ridicules the nouveau riche. I can't say that I like it myself, although I believe it's very popular with the kind of people who aren't up to the classics. <laughs> 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 so, Chris and Jenny, over to you. Uh, this is your first picture okay. clue. Oh! Oh. Wow, it's a little Michael Caine, isn't it? <laughs> Should we be concentrating on glasses? The sight? large glasses are very, very okay. important. This is your next image. Now, this is important. I can tell you the photo was taken in Jordan, uh, which is significant. Not the first time that's happened. Uh, <laughs> I can also... <laughs> <laughs> I can also tell you that you're looking for a novel uh, which has right. also been filmed. OK, now we've got a very large pair of glasses and we have a baker in Jordan. No, let's have a look at the last photo. Now, these are clues, OK, to both the location of the novel and to its main character, OK? Does anybody guess what bird... That is uh, a speckled oh, no. thrush egg. Uh, I, I love that you can recognise thrush at a distance, but no. What's this? <laughs> they are jays... Eggs. Jay's eggs. OK. Yeah, I know what it is. Jay Gatsby, the great Gatsby. Oh, I know! It's my favourite book! Ah, oh, well, there you go. Absolutely right. Sue so gets the extra point. <laughs> the answer is The Great Gatsby, acclaimed by some, and I would agree, as the great American novel, F. Scott Fitzgerald's tale centres on the mysterious Jay and glamorous Gatsby. J. Gatsby, Jay. a wealthy Long Islander. Let's have a look at the photos. An enormous pair of glasses is a recurring motif in the novel as they appear on a giant billboard. Next is oh. the Jordanian baker, and Jordan Baker is a character with whom the narrator becomes romantically involved. And your final picture was absolutely awash with clues. Yes. J is Gatsby's first name, Egg. and he lives in West Egg, uh, but I'm going to give a point to Sue and Mark. <laughs> so, so do, do you think, Jenny, because it is your favourite novel, do you think it is the great American novel, The Great Gatsby? I think it's one of the great uh, novels. I haven't read all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Which British actress appeared in the film as Mia Farrow's daughter? Oh, the little girl that uh, married the boy from Oasis. Uh, Patsy Kentit. Yes, and she was in the, the P advert as well. Do you know, I so know what it's going to be like sitting next to you in a home Holy one day. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Great Gatsby is set in the era that Fitzgerald himself called the Jazz Age, which was shortly followed by the Great Depression. <laughs> jazz followed by depression. <laughs> Why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of round one, I can tell you that Chris and Jenny have got no points, but Sue and Mark are in the lead with three. The shame of it. The shame of it. And the second round is called Yes and I'm Mickey Mouse. We introduce the teams to members of the public who happen to share their names with famous characters from literature, film or song. And they must attempt to identify who they are by posing questions to which the answer can only be yes or no. Teams have just 90 seconds to cross-examine, after which they I'm must right guess who now. they are talking to. Sue and Mark, here is your fictional namesake. <laughs> Our guest here shares her name with a well-known character from literature, and for the audience only, here's who she is. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Sue and Mark, your 90 seconds starts now. Are you a contemporary from... novel? No. Um, uh, 19th century? Yes. Are uh, you English? Yes. Are you the title of the book? Yes. Um, or... Are you Pride and Prejudice? <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you um, a George Eliot novel? No. Are you... Who's around? Oh, she's Jane, there. Austin. Jane, Jane Austen. Jane Austen. Yes. What's that woman called? Um, <laughs> which one? The woman who's the title of the book in the Jane Austen Charlotte, novel. Charlotte, surely. Do um, you know who it is? Which one? The oh. Jane Austen, Mansfield Park. She wrote, she wrote Sense no, and Sensibility. Prime. One, is it Jane Austen novel? Yes. It is, right. Oh. Uh, for, 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 I was about to say Fanny Hill. I don't know what... <laughs> <laughs> Villette. Um, no, she didn't write that was Bronte. Um, you wish have to suddenly all persuasion. She didn't know they shouldn't write that either. I... Oh. No, what? <laughs> right, Jane Austen novels, let's think. There's Pride and Prejudice, there's Sense and Sensibility, there's Mansfield. the other one, Mansfield Park. <laughs> and I've missed something really obvious here, haven't I? <laughs> well, it's, 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 on the way. it's not both names, it's one of the names is the title of the book. Shirley, Phil... Oh, Emma, Emma, Emma! Emma. <laughs> Emma. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Can you tell me what her full name is, please? Emma what? <laughs> Emma! <laughs> Do we need I'm to know this for the point? I've asked you what her name is. There's no point just randomly coming... Shouting Emma is the cleverest thing Emma. I've ever done and I don't get a point for it. <laughs> you, do you know Mr Knightley? Yes. You be Emma Knightley! No! <laughs> <laughs> Technically, that's true. She, be. she becomes Emma Knightley. But her original no. name... <laughs> if she lived in an arboreal retreat... Forest! <laughs> if she lived... Forest! Woodland! In Rome! Wood, Lumberjack! Wood, 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 wood house! Wood house! Yes! Oh. Yes! Yes! Hello, Emma Woodhouse. Emma Woodhouse, yes. Oh, I'm really sorry. Oh, the, lady is <laughs> the namesake of Jane Austen's Emma Woodhouse, the title character. <laughs> Do we get of, half a point? Oh, we? I'm no. <laughs> of, <laughs> Do you know what? Actually, I thought Mark did really well. So I said, so normally I give you two points for a, for a whole thing, but I'm going to give you one. So I, because really that was very clever, Mark, and, and I was surprised. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so one point there to Sue and Mark. Well Thanks. done. <laughs> Did you read it as a child? I did, this morning, yeah. Oh, this <laughs> morning? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do now? I'm a magazine editor. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're very full of literary people that uh, they must know then your name, do they? they? Uh, well, the clever ones, I suppose. The clever ones. <laughs> yeah. It's a great way to discern your friends, isn't it? Right? <laughs> yes, exactly. My name's Emma Woodhouse and see if there's a reaction. I like that very much. <laughs> well, thank you very much, thank Emma Woodhouse. <laughs> When starting the novel, Jane Austen said, I'm going to take a heroine whom no one but myself will much like, and in the eyes of millions of A-level students, well done. <laughs> <laughs> right, Chris and Jenny, let's meet your namesake. <laughs> now, your mystery guest has the same identity as a character from film as well as mm -hmm. from fiction, and okay. for the audience only, here's who he is. <laughs> So, Chris and Jenny, your 90 seconds begins now. Uh, is the fiction a novel? Yes. It is. OK. Is it an American novel? Yes. Is it The Great Gatsby? <laughs> <laughs> no. Is it uh, from the 20th century? Yes. OK. Uh, is it, are you the title character? Yes. 
Uh, are you a goodie? No. Okay. I think you are quite good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to go with yes. Um, are you Jesus? Oh, no. <laughs> Do you live outside the law? Yes. Are you a cowboy? No. Uh, is the film recent? <laughs> yes, they are. The, they yes, are. they are. Oh, right, oh so hello. Okay, okay. <laughs> are you Jason Bourne? I am. Yeah! Yes! I can tell you that this gentleman shares his name with Robert Ludlum's action hero Jason Bourne as played in the films The Bourne Identity, The Bourne Supremacy and The Bourne Ultimatum with Matt Damon. Two points, so well done. Yes. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Is there a reaction amongst your friends that, they all, that you are the Jason Bourne? Yes. What do you do for a living? I'm a computer engineer. I'm an assassin for the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jason Bourne. <laughs> Yeah, Jason Bourne suffers from retrograde amnesia, a condition in which... <laughs> That's what I've got! <laughs> in the first film, Jason Bourne gradually discovers he has the necessary ability to become a deadly assassin and kill in cold blood, something we've all come to realise while queuing at the post office. <laughs> So at the end of that round, Chris and Jenny have got two points, but still in the lead with four are Mark and Sue. While we leave you for a few moments to check our own identities are intact, here is a question for you to conjure with at home. Which controversial book published in 1987 was ghostwritten by Paul Greengrass, director of The Bourne Supremacy and The Bourne Ultimatum? I'll see you after the break. Welcome back to What the Dickens, where before the break I asked which controversial book published in 1987 was ghostwritten by Paul Greengrass, director of The Bourne Supremacy and The Bourne Ultimatum. Anybody? Spy we know, we know, Spycatcher. Yeah. Oh, you both he do? He just said it, he said it yeah. first. Uh, the answer is the book the government tried to ban, Peter Wright's Spycatcher. We move on now to Love It or Loathe It, in which our guests select something from the arts that either enchants or repels them. They must claim that they both love it and loathe it in turn. The opposing team gets to question them and must then decide which of the opposite opinions expressed represent the truth. Now, Mark, you're going to be up first. What have you chosen? Twelve Angry Men. Ah, oh, the film. The film? The film, yeah. Yes, OK. Uh, are you going to start by loving or loathing 12 Well, angry? I'll start by loving uh, 12 angry men. OK, please convince <laughs> uh, Chris and Jenny, starting now. Uh, now, I just find this an extraordinary piece of work because it is about one man in this room with 11 other men on the jury and, uh, quite simply, he's got the job of trying to convince them that this apparently, obviously guilty defendant is actually not guilty and it's just a tremendous example of how one person speaking out can uh, can make the difference and so it, uh, it seems as if it's hopeless it's the situation that we've all faced so many times in life you know what's the point of speaking out it won't make any difference but not only that but all the people many of which are sort of racist in the room because the defendant's black and they really have no time for him he manages to convince them by trusting the good in them and seeing the good in, in all of them all the time but he wins them over very carefully and I think, therefore, it's not just a brilliant film, but it's also a model in life and how to deal with bigotry and so on. Be the one person prepared to speak out, but do it gently. And the great thing that it not just says, but I think leaves a resonance of saying is one person can make a difference. This is a wonderful film. That bit with the knife, do you not think that's a fantastic The moment? wonderful bit with the knife yeah. or the rubbish bit with the knife? <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's flip the coin and have you now loathe the film, please. What a pile of stinking liberal twaddle. <laughs> I've watched this and I thought, oh, for God's sake, who on earth can believe that this person would be able to win an argument, even with the hardest racists? I mean, you sort of meet some of these people at times and it's absolutely absurd, the idea that you could just gently win them over. It made me so bloody irritated. The idea that they all come round and see the error of their ways is frankly the dis type of disgusted middle-class twaddle that has <laughs> made this country the pit it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, does he love it all over? I, I know Mark and he's a sort of, he, he likes the truth and justice and all that sort of stuff and he's a bit of a romantic as well. I think he's a fan. I think he genuinely loves it. Chris, are you in agreement? I, I'm completely in agreement. They think you love it. Do you love it or loathe it? 
well. Yeah. yeah. Man is a compelling legal drama that will stay in your mind forever, much like the case of Max Mosley and those leather clad German ladies. <laughs> now it's Jenny's turn to try to persuade us that she loves or loathes someone from the arts world. Jenny, what have you gone for? Well, well, I've gone for what's her face, Tracy Emin. <laughs> Uh, and are you going to love or loathe the work of Tracy Emin? Well, I'll love first the work okay. of Tracy Emin. Uh, so, I, yes, I, I think that she's fantastic because, I, you know, the world divides into those that love Tracy and those that don't, and I always despise that those that don't because they end up being those type of people, Daily Mail readers, who can't bear modern art and refuse to understand it and always say, my daughter's got a bed. <laughs> it makes me want to punch them very hard. Um, I actually think that her work is incredibly moral, uh, in so much that if you do see the bed, the infamous bed, uh, which she should have won the Turner Prize for and didn't, I can't remember the year, but it was that spectacular year, wasn't it, where she wandered onto the South Bank show very drunk and uh, didn't know where she was. We've all been there. Not on the South Bank show, obviously, haven't been asked, not yet, but after doing literary shows like this, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Anyway, now you, you see that bed in all its sort of spectacular, spunky old sort of <laughs> destroyed, uh, you know, the opposite of glory. I think it's a real wake-up call to lots of girls who've been living that kind of lifestyle. OK, well, let's, 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 let's move on, let's move on. Uh, we'll flip the coin here. I now need you to loathe Tracy Emin. So overrated, and I do think she gives women artists a terribly bad name because it is so internal, navel-gazing. She's like a tiny girl who sort of can't... are just so intrigued by their own bodily secretions that they pick their noses and they wipe their bogeys on the wall. And uh, <laughs> don't pretend you haven't. And... <laughs> She can never turn her gaze out. It's always in. And it becomes extremely exhausting when you go round to her exhibitions. You just find yourself wanting to scream, enough, Tracy, enough about you. She's going to be an oldish woman, you know, displaying her incontinence pads and, and you know, oh, look at this bit of old bunion. And I just, I just think that it's time she turned out. OK, okay. any questions? I'd quite like to see the old bunion installation. <laughs> if you don't believe that art should stem from personal experience, then, then where should it come from? The thing about Tracy, she's incredible incredibly vain so because she knows she's got a fantastic body she's always taking any uh, any opportunity whatsoever to strip off and there's this photograph of her she's more or less naked and there's money cascading out of her front bottom and I just think I'm finding it difficult that Jenny said front bottom and I've heard so many other words that she's <laughs> used I, I, over the years I, I, I need to know whether you think I, uh, my personal feeling is you absolutely love her it's the soul. It's the soul of the woman. I know you yes, just love. Yes, and you were her. almost, you were almost sort of aching to even pretend to. What's not to her? love about Tracy Emin? Tell me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> can you reveal, please, <laughs> Mrs. Claire, from your front bottom? <laughs> <laughs> she does. Yeah. She loves it. Tracy Emin is most famous for her art installation, My Bed, which features stained sheets and a floor covered in condoms, cigarette packets, dirty knickers, and most damning of all, a still unopened copy of the book How to Draw. <laughs> so at the end of that round, I can tell you that Jenny and Chris have got four points, but still in the lead are Mark and Sue with six. Oh. So, with Chris and Jenny in need of points, we finish with losing the plot. In this quick-fire round, our captains communicate the plot of a work of literature, film or song to their teammates without mentioning names or places and without alluding to the title in any way. Uh, in the lead are Mark and Sue, and so they get to start. Sue, here is your envelope. Thank you. And your 90 seconds no, starts now. Uh, oligarchs come from here, and uh, so did a writer who wrote the seminal book from that country. Uh, uh, War and Peace. Uh, it was a different one. When you commit a, a wrong deed, you commit... Crime a, and punishment. Thank you. Um, nice guy uh, goes to the capital to, 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 to give a rousing speech. Mr. Uh, someone goes to Washington. In, probably the most common name of all. Uh, exactly. <laughs> oh, hilarious um, children's character. Um, who, Mr. Bean. Uh, the first part of that was correct. The but, Mr. Bean. Oh, hang on. What happens if you put your hand under my armpit and Mr. direct Tickle. it? Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> what, what happens... Oh, now we're... Now, now yeah, I'm getting the hang of it. What happens now if I... am very accident-prone. I might just into things and... Mr. Uh, Bump. Yes. And, um, oh, we, they, they, they meet every, every every day at sort of 4.30. They've got a thing going on. It's a song. Mr. Reconnaissance. Um, <laughs> something like that. The, the second most popular name in this country is... Jones. Indeed. Unless... 
Um, and there's two of them. There's a husband and wife, and they're called... Mr and Mrs Jones. Yes, but um, he it's from his perspective, so he's saying... Mr Jones and wife. It's a song. Um, <laughs> me, me and Mrs Jones. Exactly. Um, uh, I'm a man. I'm a man. I like to dress up as a woman. I'm doing it for a reason. Tootsie. Uh, it's Priscilla a nanny. of the desert. She's a nanny. Over the Mrs Doubtfire. Indeed. Um, <laughs> well, 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 well. Uh, so I can tell you that you've got, uh, in the end, you've got 12 points there. You need nine. On 90 no points! <laughs> Your 90 seconds starts now. What do you want to talk about, Jen? Come on, right. come on, come on. OK, uh, it's posh people, uh, one of them has a teddy bear, Granada... Oh, uh, uh, Bryce had revisited. That's correct. <laughs> Said in uh, this man who talks like this, he has Bond. fangs like this. That's right. Bond, yeah, it's Bond. That's right. It's Bond. <laughs> James Bond. No, not James Bond. Double <laughs> seven. All the other Bond <laughs> He turns into a bat, the man turns into a bat, he drinks people's blood. Vampire? Yeah, yeah, it's how awful. But what, what is <laughs> specifically, I know they're dreadful, aren't they? You've got that look on your face, a vampire Go in on. this quiz. <laughs> what was his name? And which vampire was it? Well, that's the question, that's what I'm asking you, I can't tell you. What, name the, any vampire. What vampires do you know? Name the vampires you Victor know. Victor the vampire. <laughs> that's a really famous vampire. <laughs> What's a really famous, the most famous vampire? I don't know. I <laughs> okay, can't remember. We're not going home until right. Dracula. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a film starring some people. It was set in about the 18th century. It's called Dangerous Liaisons. This next one is uh, about a boy and his love for his bird. It's a bird. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Go, Jenny. OK, so if we keep them with one syllable, yeah, yeah, we're all yeah. right. OK, fine. Uh, this is about a tiny animated deer whose mother... Bambi! Yeah, this... Uh, this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is about a, a small, clever man and his big, stupid... Uh, uh, is it brother, friend? I can't remember. It has to shoot him in the end. Uh, it's of mice and men. Oh, mice and men. Yeah. Is... Steinbeck, Steinbeck. That's right, Steinbeck. Brilliant. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Close. Why, another six and you'd have won. <laughs> that was brilliant. brilliant. The Dracula thing, because the, the, there'd have been, like, 18-month-old babies going, Dracula, Victor Dracula, the vampire. <laughs> you managed to get Kez, Bambi and Brideshead revisited, and that was it. That was your lot. What all this means is that at the end of the show, our shamed losers are Chris and Jenny with so seven sorry, points, no. and our exultant <laughs> victors are Mark and Sue with 12. <laughs> To vampire, Victor the vampire. Uh, <laughs> this has been What the Dickens, I've been Sandy Toxvig, and I'm off to the theatre to see The Mousetrap and shout out, The Butler Did It. I'll see you there. Good night. <laughs> and catch the Sky Arts Quiz Hour from 7 next week with Classic Mastermind, then What the Dickens at 7.30. I'm next tonight on Sky Arts 1 and Sky Arts HD. The question is, where's tonight's Heartland USA headed? Thank <laughs> you.